Hello, this is Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. Welcome. It's very important for people with severe food allergies to avoid the foods that they're allergic to. For them, eating even a small amount of nuts or seafood by mistake could be life-threatening. And in 2004, the Food Allergen Labeling and Consumer Protection Act, that's a mouthful, was put in place to make life just a little bit easier and safer for people with food allergies. Specifically, it mandates that food labels must declare on packaged foods whether or not the product might contain allergens from milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. You probably noticed this information on packaged foods if you're a label reader. Right underneath the list of ingredients, you might see something in bold type like contains milk and eggs. Even though we've identified over 200 different food allergens, these eight foods that I just listed account for 90% of all food allergy reactions. And in the industry, they're often referred to as the big eight. But in fact, allergies to some of the big eight are a lot more common than others. According to a new review in the journal Nutrition Today, milk or dairy is by far the most commonly diagnosed food allergy, affecting about 2% of the adult population, or one out of every 50. Now, the percentage of people who report being lactose intolerant is quite a bit higher than that, but it's important to distinguish between the two. Lactose intolerance, which is a reduced ability to digest the lactose sugar in milk, is not a true allergy. Allergies are almost always reactions to proteins, and people who are allergic to milk usually are allergic to the milk protein casein. Shellfish is the next most common food allergen affecting 1 in 65 people. Fish, nuts, eggs, wheat, and peanuts all affect fewer than 1 in 100 people. Interestingly, soy allergy is only thought to affect one in every 1,000 people. So the big eight are really more like the big seven plus one. (laughs) The inclusion of soy in that list of common allergens may create the impression that soy allergy is much more common than it actually is. Many consumers also misinterpret this required allergen labeling to mean that these foods should be avoided even by people who don't have an allergy. This impression can be reinforced by front-of-package labeling, claiming that their products are free of various ingredients. And this is really helpful information for people who have a reason to avoid those ingredients, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that product is healthier or more nutritious. I'm going to take just a brief break, and then I want to talk a little bit about what all of this means for people who are trying to eat clean. These days, a lot of people are attracted to this idea of eating clean. And I have to put that term in quotation marks because no one really knows exactly what that means. To some, it means avoiding all processed foods. For others, it's about avoiding certain ingredients or additives. For some people, it's really more of a gut feeling than a strict definition. But they might interpret foods without any allergens or any of these eight common allergens as being somehow cleaner. But the absence of an ingredient that 1% to 2% of the population are allergic to does not make a food cleaner. This declaration is solely to protect that small fraction of the population who need to avoid them. Now, some people might even avoid foods that contain soy or wheat in the belief that repeated exposure might cause allergies to develop. But this is not at all the case. Eating a food frequently does not cause you to develop an allergy to it. If anything, the opposite appears to be true. We now know that children who are exposed to peanuts early in life, for example, are less likely to develop peanut allergies, not more likely. Let me just clarify, however, that eating a food is not a way to treat an existing food allergy. Right now, avoiding that allergen is really the only way to prevent a potentially dangerous reaction. And people with severe food allergies should also be aware of the signs of a food reaction and equipped to respond quickly in the event that they are accidentally exposed. 
There is some exciting research in the pipeline that may soon offer new treatments that might actually reduce reactions to existing food allergies. We're not quite there yet. And we may one day even be able to use gene editing technology or CRISPR technology to create strains of, say, peanuts or wheat that don't contain the proteins that cause the allergic reactions. But in the meantime, there's really no reason to avoid allergens unless you are allergic to them. All of the foods included in that allergen label requirement are highly nutritious foods. Soy, milk, fish, and eggs are all sources of high-quality protein. Nuts and fish deliver healthy fats. Soy, wheat, and nuts also provide fiber and a whole variety of health-promoting compounds. Assuming that you do not have an actual allergy or intolerance, there would be no reason to avoid them or to prioritize foods that exclude them. In fact, Building a healthy and nutritious diet is a lot easier when you do include them. You'll find a transcript of today's episode along with the entire Nutrition Diva episode archive, which now includes 566 episodes on every possible aspect of nutrition and food at quickanddirtytips.com. I also have links to some of the research and other resources that I referenced in today's episode. And if you have comments or questions, you can feel free to leave comments on our website or come find me on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. I often do live Q&As and Facebook Lives relative to each week's episode. So if you're not already following me on Facebook. You'll find me at facebook.com slash nutrition diva. Our show is produced by Nathan Sems, edited by Karen Hertzberg. Our team at Macmillan Audio also includes Morgan Ratner, Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, and our director, Kathy Doyle. But of course, the most important person on our team is you, the listener. So thanks so much for listening this week. I'll see you next week.